the same kind of film industry which is working in chennai chennai also there are studios chennai also there are poets chennai chennai also there are film producers chennai also there are sets so when it is referred to bollywood you mean to say bombay film industry when you mean to say tollywood it is tamil film industry which is basically in chennai right and similarly this bollywood and tollywood the name has been picked up from the original source which is hollywood hollywood is in united states and that hollywood is a film industry that works over there english movies and all they produce over there so we are right now talking about tollywood and what happens in tollywood tamil pictures this poets and pancakes is in the backdrop of tamil films that are produced in chennai right the atmosphere the kind of people what kind of people work there what is their job what is their duty how do they write how do they shoot right and what is the role of heroes and heroines and what is the role of makeup man all kinds of things all paraphernalia all the other things they all are included in this tollywood so in poets and pancakes they give you a glimpse of the life that is transpiring that is happening in the tamil film industry okay that is all about poets and pancakes poets these are the people those who write script these are the people those who design certain dialogues write dialogues script right and pancake is a kind of uh makeup material this makeup material is something which is used in tons of loads and this is a kind of foundation if you have to have very shining nice walls in your house and when you have to go for a painting right what do you do first of all you have to remove the old paint and all pits and holes that are formed there in the wall you put up a primer or putty right this primer or putty when it is put up on the face it is called foundation right so they make your skin glowing smooth without any pores without any holes right and after putting this putty on your face then they give color to the, your face so even those who are dark and black they also start appearing very fine fair right you can have all kinds of hues and colors right so that is being done so pancake that is what is pancake so that is the title justification of title poets and pancakes right and the relationship between the poets and the pancakes what do you mean by poets and relationship between the poets and the pancakes that means writers relationship of writers and dialogue writers and story writers script writers their relationship with the heroes and heroines actors right that is the story all about we heard the story a little bit and let us see if we can we would we would listen to the story once again and then we'll move ahead ah uh, well 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 let me try if it is audible to you otherwise i'll share my screen let me share my screen and then show it to you present my screen Page fifty-seven, Chapter Six, Poets and Pancakes, about the author. 
Asok Mitrin, 1931, a Tamil writer, recounts his years at Gemini Studios in his book, My Years with Boss, which talks of the influence of movies on every aspect of life in India. The Gemini Studios, located in Chennai, was set up in 1940. It was one of the most influential film producing organizations of India in the early days of Indian filmmaking. Its founder was S.S. Vasan. The duty of Asoka Mitran in Gemini Studios was to cut out newspaper clippings on a wide variety of subjects and store them in files. Many of these had to be written out by hand. Is it audible to you? You can type. It's audible. Good. Okay, we'll continue. Thank you. And although he performed an insignificant function, he was the most well-informed of all the members of the Gemini family. The following is an excerpt from his book, My Years with Boss. Notice these words and expressions in the text. Infer their meaning from the context. Blew over. Catapulted into laid into their hands, heard a bell ring, was struck down, a coat of mail, the favorite haunt, heard a bell ringing. Pancake was the brand name of the makeup material that Gemini Studios bought in truckloads. Greta Gabo must have used it. Ms. Gohar must have used it. Vijayanti Mala must also have used it. But Rati Agnihotri may not have even heard of it. The makeup department of the Gemini Studios was in the upstairs of a building that was believed to have been Robert Clive's stables. A dozen other buildings in the city are said to have been his residence. Page 58 For his brief life, and an even briefer stay in Madras, Robert Clive seems to have done a lot of moving, besides fighting some impossible battles in remote corners of India and marrying a maiden in St. Mary's Church in Fort St. George in Madras. The makeup room had the look of a hair-cutting salon with lights at all angles around half a dozen large mirrors. They were all incandescent lights, so you can imagine the fiery misery of those subjected to makeup. The makeup department was first headed by a Bengali who became too big for a studio and left. He was succeeded by a Maharashtrian who was assisted by Dharwar Kannadiga and Andhra, a Madras Indian Christian, an Anglo-Burmese and the usual local Tamils. All this shows that there was a great deal of national integration long before AIR and Doordarshan began broadcasting programs on national integration. This gang of nationally integrated makeup men could turn any decent looking person into a hideous crimson hued monster with the help of truckloads of pancake and a number of other locally made potions and lotions. Those were the days of mainly indoor shooting and only 5% of the film was shot outdoors. I suppose the sets and studio lights needed the girls and boys to be made to look ugly in order to look presentable in the movie. A strict hierarchy was maintained in the makeup department. The chief makeup man made the chief actors and actresses ugly. His senior assistant, the second hero and heroine. The junior assistant, the main comedian, and so forth. The players who played the crowd were the responsibility of the office boy. Even the makeup department of the Gemini studio had an office boy. On the days when there was a crowd shooting, you could see him mixing his paint in a giant vessel and slapping it on the crowd players. The idea was to close every pore on the surface of the face in the process of applying makeup. He wasn't exactly a boy. 
he was in his early 40s having entered the studios years ago in the hope of becoming a star actor or a top screen writer director or lyrics writer he was a bit of a poet page 59 page 59 in those days i worked in a cubicle two whole sides of which were french windows i didn't know at that time they were called french windows seeing me sitting at my desk tearing up newspapers day in and day out most people thought i was doing next to nothing it is likely that the boss thought likewise too so anyone who felt i should be given some occupation would barge into my cubicle and deliver an extended lecture the boy in the makeup department had decided i should be enlightened on how great literary talent was being allowed to go waste in a department fit only for barbers and perverts soon i was praying for crowd shooting all the time nothing short of it could have saved me from his epics in all instances of frustration you will also find the anger directed towards a single person openly or covertly and this man of the makeup department was convinced that all his woes ignominy and neglect were due to kota mangalam subbu subbu was the number 2 at gemini studios he couldn't have had a more encouraging opening in films than our grown up makeup boy had on the contrary he must have had to face more uncertain and difficult times for when he began his career there were no firmly established film producing companies or studios even in the matter of education especially formal education subbu couldn't have had an appreciable lead over our boy but by virtue of being born a brahmin a virtue indeed he must have had exposure to more affluent situations and even people page 60 he had the ability to look cheerful at all times even after having had a hand in a flop film he always had to work for somebody he could never do things on his own but his sense of loyalty made him identify himself with his principle completely and turn his entire creativity to his principle's advantage now note what i would like you to note is this character kotha mangalam subbu right this kotha mangalam subbu is a very interesting character and you would find that he is more of a psychophant psychophant you know who keeps on saying yes to anything that boss wanted whether it is logical illogical or you do not know chamcha right that kind of thing is this psychophant is this kotha mangalam subbu and very interesting see just have a look into the his character when it's being narrated he was tailor made for films he was a man who could be inspired when commanded the rat fights the tigress under water and kills her but takes pity on the cubs and tends them lovingly i don't know how to do the scene the producer would say and subu would come out with four ways of the rat pouring affection on its victims offspring good but i'm not sure it is effective enough the producer would say and in a minute Subu would come out with fourteen more alternatives. Filmmaking must have been and was so easy with a man like Subu around. And if ever there was a man who gave direction and definition to Gemini Studios during its golden years, it was Subu. Subu had a separate identity as a poet, and though he was certainly capable of more complex and higher forms, he deliberately chose to address his poetry to the masses. his success in films overshadowed and dwarfed his literary achievements or so his critics felt he composed several truly original story poems in folk refrain and diction and also wrote a sprawling novel thelana mohanambal with dozens of very deftly etched characters he quite successfully recreated the mood and manner of the devadasis of the early 20th century he was an amazing actor He never aspired to lead roles but whatever subsidiary role he played in any of the films he performed better than the supposed main players 
he had a genuine love for anyone he came across and his house was a permanent residence for dozens of near and far relations and acquaintances it seemed against subhu's nature to be even conscious that he was feeding and supporting so many of them such a charitable and improvident man and yet he had enemies was it because he seemed so close and intimate with the boss or was it his general demeanor that resembled a psychophant's or his readiness to say nice things about everything in any case there was this man in the makeup department who would wish the direst things for subhu you saw subhu always with the boss in any case there was this man in the makeup department who would wish the direst things for subhu page 61 you saw subhu always with the boss but in the attendance roles he was grouped under a department called the story department comprising a lawyer and an assembly of writers and poets the lawyer was also officially known as the legal advisor but everybody referred to him as opposite an extremely talented actress who was also extremely temperamental once blew over the sets while everyone stood stunned the lawyer quietly switched on the recording equipment when the actress paused for breath the lawyer said to her one minute please and played back the recording there was nothing incriminating or unmentionably foul about the actress's tirade against the producer but when she heard her voice again through the sound equipment she was struck down a girl from the countryside she hadn't gone through all the stages of worldly experience that generally precede a position of importance and sophistication that she had found herself catapulted into she never quite recovered from the terror she felt that day that was the end of a brief and brilliant acting career the legal advisor who was also a member of the story department had unwittingly brought about that sad end while every other member of the department wore a kind of uniform khadi dhoti with a slightly oversized and clumsily tailored white khadi shirt the legal advisor wore pants and a tie and sometimes a coat that looked like a coat of mail often he looked alone and helpless a man of cold logic in a crowd of dreamers a neutral man in an assembly of gandhiites and khadiites like so many of those who were close to the boss he was allowed to produce a film and though uh, and though a lot of raw stock and pancake were used on it not much came of the film page 62 think as you read one why was the office boy frustrated who did he show his anger on two who was subhu's principal three Subhu is described as a many-sided genius. List four of his special abilities. Four. Why was the legal advisor referred to as the opposite by others? Five. What made the lawyer stand out from the others? Page sixty-two. Then one day, the boss closed down the story department, and this was perhaps. the only instance in all human history where a lawyer lost his job because the poets were asked to go home gemini studios was the favorite haunt of poets like s d s yogiar sangu subramaniam krishna sastri and harindranath chattopadhyay it had an excellent mess which supplied good coffee at all times of the day and for most part of the night those were the days when congress rule meant prohibition and meeting over a cup of coffee was rather satisfying entertainment barring the office boys and a couple of clerks everybody else at the studios radiated leisure a prerequisite for poetry most of them woke hadi and worshiped gandhi ji but beyond that they had not the faintest appreciation for political thought of any kind naturally they were all averse to the term communism a communist was a godless man he had no filial or conjugal love sairam so, now see here there is another theme coming in right in the writings also there is a left wing and there is a right wing 
what is the left wing in writings similarly this left wing and right wing this influence is very strong in all poets in all novels and even in movies when you say right wing the people those who believe in right wing they are the people those who believe in god these are the people those who uh, have a very strong culture so culture tradition god belief this all is right wing left wing is something which is only logical only rational only mind no trust no god no feeling so in the writings also it may be any poet but you find that there is a left wing and right wing and this is what is being explained over here that what was the impact of left wing communism leftism on this writings and the studios and the movies that is being discussed here in this part he had no compunction about killing his own parents or his children he was always out to cause and spread unrest and violence among innocent and ignorant people such notions which prevailed everywhere else in south india at that time also naturally floated about vaguely among the khadi clad poets of gemini studios evidence of it was soon forthcoming when frank buckman's moral rearmament army some 200 strong visited madras sometime in 1952 they could not have found a warmer host in india than the gemini studios someone called the group an international circus they weren't very good on the trapeze and their acquaintance with animals was only at the dinner table but they presented two plays in a most professional manner their jotham valley and the forgotten factor ran several shows in madras and along with other citizens of the city the gemini family of 600 saw the plays over and over again the message of now see there may be a question what could be could be the question that how many employees were there in gemini studio type it if you heard it in the chat section 600 okay good right so this is what you have to keep on listening to such very carefully because indirectly it's mentioned that a family of 600 saw it the gemini family of 600 that means 600 members employees were there in gemini studio right of chennai the plays were usually plain and simple homilies but the sets and costumes were first rate madras and the tamil drama community were terribly impressed and for some years almost all tamil plays had a scene of sunrise and sunset in the manner of jotham valley with a bare stage a white background curtain and a tune played on the flute page 63 It was some years later that I learned that the MRA was a kind of counter movement to international communism and the big bosses of Madras like Mr Wasson simply played into their hands. I'm not sure however that this was indeed the case for the unchangeable aspects of these big bosses and the enterprises remained the same MRA or no MRA international communism or no international communism the staff of gemini studios now can someone recollect what is the full form of mra it was told mra or no mra it was counter communism so what is this mra it is moral rearmament army moral rearmament army right had a nice time hosting 200 people of all hues and sizes of at least 20 nationalities it was such change from the usual collection of crowd players waiting to be slapped with thick layers of makeup by the office boy in the makeup department a few months later the telephone lines of the big bosses of madras buzzed and once again we at gemini studios cleared a whole shooting stage to welcome another visitor all they said was that he was a poet from england the only poets from england 
the simple Gemini staff knew or heard of were Wordsworth and Tennyson. The more literate ones knew of Keats, Shelley and Byron. And one or two might have faintly come to know of someone by the name Elliot. Who was the poet visiting the Gemini studios now? He is not a poet. He is an editor. That's why the boss is giving him a big reception. Vasan was also the editor of the popular Tamil weekly, Ananda Vikatan. He wasn't the editor of any of the known names of the British publications in Madras. That is, those known at the Gemini Studios. Since the top men of the Hindu were taking the initiative, the surmise was the poet was the editor of a daily. But not from the Manchester Guardian or the London Times. That was all that even the most well-informed among us knew. At last, around four in the afternoon, the poet or the editor arrived. He was a tall man, very English, very serious, and of course, very unknown to all of us. Battling with half and a dozen pedestal fans on the shooting stage, the boss read. The boss read out a long speech. Page 64. It was obvious that he too knew precious little about the poet or the editor. The speech was all in the most general terms, but here and there it was peppered with words like freedom and democracy. Then the poet spoke. He couldn't have addressed a more dazed and silent audience. No one knew what he was talking about, and his accent defeated any attempt to understand what he was saying. The whole thing lasted about an hour. Then the poet left and we all dispersed in utter bafflement. What were... What are we doing? What is an English poet doing in a film studio which makes Tamil films for the simplest sort of people? People whose lives least afforded them the possibility of cultivating a taste for English poetry. The poet looked pretty baffled too. For he too must have felt the sheer incongruity of his talk about the thrills and travails of an English poet. His visit remained an unexplained mystery. The great prose writers of the world may not admit it, but my conviction grows stronger day after day that prose writing is not and cannot be the true pursuit of a genius. It is for the patient, persistent, persevering drudge with a heart so shrunken that nothing can break it. Rejection slips don't mean a thing to him. He at once sets about making a fresh copy of the long prose piece and sends it on to another editor in closing postage for the return of the manuscript. It was for such people that Hindu had published a tiny announcement in an insignificant corner of an unimportant page. A short story contest organized by a British periodical by the name The Encounter. Of course, the encounter wasn't a known commodity among the Gemini literati. I wanted to get an idea of the periodical before I spent a considerable sum in postage sending a manuscript to England. Think as you read. 1. Did the people at Gemini Studios have any particular political affiliations? 2. Why was the more... Yes, can you answer this question? Did the people at Gemini Studio have any kind of political affiliations? MRA, no MRA, counter communism. What clicks? Was he favoring communism or what he was he against communism? If you feel against, type A. If you feel he was in favor, type F in the chat section. Uh, there is no, no comment at all. Did not have any what? Achha, there is no reference. Did not, did not have any affiliations. Okay. That means you need to listen to it. That means you need to listen to Mr. Vasan more carefully. Mr. Vasan was very much in favor of MRA, that is Moral Rearmament Army, 
and moral rearmament army was counter acting or was a counter organization opposing communism so therefore he was not communist he was democrat right so political affiliation here stands for whether you are liberal whether you are democrat whether you are communist whether you are capitalist out of that so he was rather a democrat he talked about freedom and he was not in favor of communism fine we'll listen to it again read it again once you'll come to know moral rearmament army welcomed at the studios 3 Name one example to show that Gemini Studios was influenced by the plays staged by M R A. Four, who was the boss of Gemini Studios? Five, what caught? Yes, who was the boss of Gemini Studio? Mr. Vasan. हाँ यस मिस्टर वासन एक तो सुन रहा है कम से कम चलो सत्य साई विद्या विहार बॉस ऑफ जिमिनी स्टूडियो सत्य साई विद्या विहार ओके इट इज मिस्टर वासन फाइन एस एस वासन ओके ऑल राइट ओके आई वांट टू आस्क यू अनदर लेट अस सी अनदर क्वेश्चन अच्छा हु इज द कैरेक्टर दैट आई आस्ड यू टू वॉच केयरफुली एज कैरेक्टराइजेशन इज कंसर्न Subbu, Kotha Mangalam Subbu, good. What was the lack All of right. communication between the Englishman and the people at Gemini Studios? Six. Why is the Englishman's visit referred to as unexplained mystery? Page sixty-five. Uh, who was this Englishman? Stephen Spender. In those days, the British Council Library had an entrance with no long winded signboards and notices to make you feel you were sneaking into a forbidden area. And there were copies of the encounter lying about in various degrees of freshness, almost untouched by readers. When I read the editor's name, I heard a bell ringing in my shrunken heart. It was the poet who had visited the Gemini Studios. I felt like I had found a long lost brother and I sang as I sealed the envelope and wrote out his address. I felt that he too would be singing the same song at the same time. Long lost brothers of Indian films discover each other by singing the same song in the first reel and in the final reel of the film. Stephen Spender Stephen that was his name. and years later when i was out of gemini studios and i had much time but not much money anything at a reduced price attracted my attention on the footpath in front of the madras mount road post office there was a pile of brand new books for 50 paise each actually they were copies of the same book an elegant paperback of american origin special low priced students edition in connection with the 50th anniversary of the russian revolution i paid 50 paise and picked up a copy of the book the god that failed six eminent men of letters in six separate essays described their journeys into communism and their disillusioned return andre gide andre gait andre jait Richard Wright, Ignacio Silon, Ignacio Silon, Arthur Costler, Arthur Costler, Louis Fisher, Louis Fisher, and Stephen Spender. Stephen Spender. Suddenly, the book assumed tremendous significance. Page sixty-six. Stephen Spender. the poet who had visited gemini studios in a moment i felt a dark chamber of my mind lit up by a hazy illumination the reaction to stephen spender at gemini studios was no longer a mystery the boss of the gemini studios may not have much to do with spender's poetry but not with his god that failed understanding the text understanding the text One, the author has used gentle humor 
to point out human foibles. Pick out instances of this to show how this serves to make the piece interesting. Two, why was Kotamangalam Subu considered number two? Now there are some question answers that we shall be discussing tomorrow and a PPT I'll show you about the important events that happen in this story. Once again to repeat, there is some kind of reference to communism. There is some English poet who visited the studio. His name is Stephen Spender. There is something like MRA, which stands for Moral Rearmament Army. There is something about the functioning of the studio where there is a legal advisor, right? But they satirically, what is being said that he was a legal, illegal advisor, not legal advisor. Then there is a script writer, then there are poets, then there are artists, those who are working in the studio. Then there is one character, very typical character of that uh, Gemini studio. Gemini studio was being owned by Mr. Vasan, S.S. Vasan, and he was assisted by Kotha Mangalam Subhu. And Kotha Mangalam Subhu is having some very innate talents. His talents are also being mentioned over there. So this is how the story develops from one point. To the other point we'll stop here and we'll see the powerpoint presentations with certain points tomorrow one more information i would like to share with all of you that maybe after half an hour or two hours you can see this recording of today's class on youtube channel of our school it's all being recorded right so supposing somebody has some kind of network problem somebody was not able to log in it is always available in the YouTube channel of our school. Log into YouTube channel and you will find the recordings of all of your classes. Right? They will be uploaded within half an hour on the YouTube channel. So at your leisure, at your time, you can see. And if your cameras were on, you can see yourself also there. That's it. Sairam, any questions that you wish to ask? Anything? Nothing. Okay. We'll have Shanti part. Join your hands. Close your eyes. Om Shanti 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 Sairam. You may all leave. I would be the last one to leave. 